What's going on, everybody? Hope you're enjoying your summer. We know that Eurovision 2022 feels like a long ways away, but today we actually have some news coming in from Spain. They're going to a national selection next year, and we're going to be talking all about it. So we're going to start off by going to our resident Spaniard, Clara. Uh, tell us about this announcement. Well, today we got to know that Benidorm, a city in the Valencian community where I'm from, um, coincidence? I don't think so, um, <laughs> will be hosting uh, the national selection for Eurovision. It will consist on two semifinals and one final, and it will be hosted in Benidorm because Benidorm has a big musical tradition of hosting the International Song Festival of Benidorm, which was uh, first and foremost designed to promote the Spanish music. And it's a festival that started in, I think, 1956, and it went all the way till 2006. They missed a few years uh, here and there, I think uh, because of lack of interest or some political issues going on those particular years. But I grew up hearing a lot about um, Benidorm's Song Festival, so I'm actually very excited. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to mention too as well, because uh, when it was found out, because they, they teased this announcement uh, mm -hmm. sometime last week, and people thought that because the announcement was going to be happening in Benidorm, that they would be resurrecting that mm -hmm. old festival, which th that isn't the case this time. But as I understand, that festival was actually much like Eurovision, inspired by San Remo. Yes, indeed. Um, they wanted to uh, take San Remo to Spain and... Uh, uh, actually, a lot of Latin American uh, singers were invited to perform. It was to promote the Spanish music in general, not only the Spanish from Spain kind of music, but Spanish of all the Hispanic uh, communities in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go to you, Rita. Um, so you're from Portugal, and I understand that on many occasions you have been a fan of Spain at Eurovision. Uh, how do you feel yes. about this announcement? I was actually very happy when, like, after the Eurovision this year, there was this possibility on the table and I was really excited about it and I really wanted it to happen because I'm a big fan of national finals and I think national finals are like the essential bridge to connect the public to the Eurovision Song Contest because Eurovision is for the public. So I feel like when there's a national um, final involved, people get more interested because they actually had a role to play in the, the song that um, it's going to be sung in the Eurovision Song Contest. So yeah, I was really happy about it. And oh well, I do love Spanish entries. So yeah, I, I'm really excited. I, and I, I got to know Clara as well, because we've, mm -hmm. we've seen national selections. It hasn't been that long. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm pretty sure it was 2019. Um, of course, it wasn't the, the typical national selection that we, we tend to see in other countries because it was done through uh, Operación Triunfo, which is mm -hmm. very much like an idol style reality show. Um, how do you feel about this format uh, being what uh, Spain is going to rely on? Well, I'm hopeful for the first time because uh, it's not only um, the city of Benidorm that's involved, it's not only the Eurovision delegation, it's also the Spanish main TV station and the Valencian government because the president of the Valencian community actually was there uh, hosting the event and speaking to the audience and they've come up with a, a plan or a strategy that they're going to follow because it's not going to be a one-time thing. They intend to make this a uh, Spanish music landmark. Uh, they want it, this to be uh, an annual event. Um, they want to push the Spanish musical talent, the young, fresh talent. Um, they are actually uh, going to elect a new head of delegation Mm -hmm. And they, now Spain will want to push forward the new communication strategy when it comes to Eurovision because they really, really want to take Eurovision seriously. And this is what both the representative of the Spanish television and the president of the Valencian community said in this uh, press event that happened today in Benidorm. Mm -hmm. So certainly it sounds really promising. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it must be said that if we look at you know all the way that all the ways that countries select uh, their song and artist, there really isn't a there doesn't seem to be a, a perfect formula. Um, I mean, you could argue that Italy has it down because they tend to be one of the most successful mm -hmm. uh, countries. 
um, when it comes to selecting through San Remo, but obviously there's a lot to be discussed there about the fact that San Remo is so historic. It's it's really the OG uh, Eurovision. Um, but Rita, I, I want you to, to shed some light on this as well, because in Portugal, as we know, um, Festival de Cancel went under a retooling in the mid 2010s, yes. uh, and that resulted in overall better results. Not in every case, because there were still yes. there was still you know uh, the fact that Conan Osiris didn't qualify, which I feel very strongly about, um, and also uh, Cla why. Claudia Pascual <laughs> uh, coming last in in the year that uh, uh, Portugal was hosting, which obviously there's things to, to be discussed there. But it, aside from that, we had Portugal's first win. Uh, and we also saw this year uh, the Black Mamba, who were severely under yeah. underrated, actually made it to the final. They were. So what, what do you think about uh, the possibility, especially since, you know, it, it sounds like there's a lot of uh, cultural interest. Do you, are you optimistic that this could work for Spain the way that it did for Portugal? Well, um, as I said before, I'm a fan of national finals, so I believe in their potential. And honestly, like... I know that Spain has had a few tries in the past that didn't work out um, and others that worked uh, really worked out. So I would say that this national final, it's, I, I think there are only two scenarios possible. Like it's either going to flop or it's going to be amazing. Um, and I do feel like, for, like talking for myself, um, I love Stival de Canção because I, f I feel um, represented. And when I say I feel represented, I mean I get to pick up the phone and vote for the people I want to represent my country. My my country that I'm, I'm I want to show people that I'm proud of my country. So what better way to, you know, pick up the phone, vote for my favorite. And I think that if there was no Festival de Canção in Portugal, half of the Portuguese uh, Eurofans would not um, like see Eurovision. Because I, I like it's what I said before, it's that bridge that connects people and I do feel like that's what Spain needs right now because I feel like Spanish people are so disconnected from Eurovision because themselves have lost like interest and hope in Spain in the future so I think this contest could be like let's say a turning point for Spain because they've they've had a few not a few, a lot of bad results recently. Um, but yeah, one of like some of them, they deserved higher. But yeah, I think that's it's definitely like an exciting national. It's going to be an exciting national mm -hmm. final. Mm -hmm. It definitely seems like an opportunity to do something something pretty strong. Uh, sorry, Clara, you were going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say that it does look much more promising, especially because they are changing the whole uh, staff uh, structure around. Yeah the delegation and I think that was really needed and I like that um, they're listening to what the Spanish Eurofans have been uh, saying for so long. There needs to be a better communication strategy, there needs to be a better communication in general and hopefully, hopefully this delegation uh, will understand what Eurovision is and what their Spanish artists or our Spanish artists needs to be open to Europe because there needs to be networking, there needs to be participate, participation and um, mixing with other artists and other delegations and uh, being open to interviews and have good English. Yes, like get, you know, get in touch with us as well. We would love to to connect with the uh, whoever is going to be representing uh, Spain next year, as well as uh, whoever is going to be competing. Um, and on that topic, I understand that uh, they've said that they expect the songs, the entries, to be released uh, this November. Um, and before we go, I'd like to just kind of brainstorm. What are what what would be the ideal kind of music, or you know, certain artists that we know from from Spain that uh, you would love to see something of that vein represent represent the country? So let's start with you, Clara. Who do you think? Rigoberta Bandini. Um, the thing is, like, do you know her? No. Uh, she has this really. She's become really huge this summer, and uh, she is in Spain. Every summer we get like the Amstel. Um, advertising which marks the beginning of the summer and she is doing the soundtrack to it and the song is really good so i would like to see her in eurovision i would make i would love to see aitana but i think aitana might be too big and maybe not so interested but for me it would be either aitana or rigoberta bandini or okay. lola indigo lola indigo ah uh, yes yes she would make a fantastic fantastic show how about you rita 
Well, in my case, I don't know many artists outside uh, Eurovision from Spain. But the kind of song that I'm like looking forward to is probably like it has to have like a Spanish touch. I don't know how to explain it. I just feel it when it's uh, from yeah, exactly what Clara is doing. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> say Whatever any this artist. Means. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't say any artist in specific because I don't know many of them. Mm -hmm. um, I do know a few, but I don't think I would like to see them at Eurovision. Um, but yeah, I, I need um, a cultural um, like song, like I need to feel that Spanish touch that will make me want to dance or cry or just feel whatever emotion I, I want. Because I do feel like Spanish uh, itself, like the language has um, the power to do this, even though people don't speak it, they will feel it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly if we're looking at the Eurovision that we just had, we saw a lot of songs that had that cultural element to it uh, in, in an authentic way uh, do really, really well. We had, you know, four out of the top five in languages that weren't in English. So certainly, you know, there is an opportunity for success. Um, the name that I'm going to throw in is uh, an artist that I've just discovered from uh, Murcia, and his name is Muerdo. I don't know how well known he is, but... Uh, what? Muerdo, like, bite. Oh. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not saying that that uh, correctly. But. <laughs> I don't know many Spanish uh, musicians or many Spanish singers, so you're probably. Nonetheless, nonetheless, that's the name that I'm going to throw in. Um, and also, like, uh, this would be somebody who is definitely too big to go uh, himself, but something along the lines of Pablo Lopez, I would be definitely in mm -hmm. favor of. You know, a really like strong, powerful, authentic ballad, maybe even played at a piano. I would be really keen on seeing that. But obviously, there's lots of possibilities. Let us know what you think about uh, Spain returning to a national selection for 2022. Um, are you optimistic? Are you not as optimistic as some other people might be? Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe to Eurovox because, as you can see, there's Eurovision news all year round. So you're going to want to be on top of it as we are. Um, and uh, follow us on our socials at Eurovox. Uh, we hope to see you on the next video and we will see you then. Take care. Bye. Thank you.